you're in pain and you're chewing up and you're like and you're like um is it for the same period like you know there's that tone i know that people have like um are you sure you're not being dramatic about Something as natural as menstruation is also a thing of shame in the society. We've had women express how they felt, maybe from the opposite sex or women like them, you know, went down their period. And it's crazy. Period shame is a thing. And this is what we want to address today. So welcome to my period chronicles. As you all know, and I'm guessing you know what we'll be talking about today. We will be handling period shaming and we will be sharing stories from women all over the world as well as that of our guest right here. I'm your humble host, your pretty host, <laughs> Bidemi Adedri, and I have my girls, the classy, sexy, Adedri Kaya. <laughs> okay, so I'm supposed to introduce Sadia, but before I do, I need to hold this woman around so I'm doing it on camera so that you can you can't be looking this good and not give me dollars after this so I don't know. What's it gonna be? We are not doing What's this here. Not in front of the camera. <laughs> so our guest today is Sadia. Sadia is a lawyer, an actress, wow. and uh, she sings on some days. Oh, so like a true trend with female power. Why she has so crazy? <laughs> I'm shocked. Like, is this me? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so these are the ones I know. So tell us more about you and all of that before you now tell us about your period shaming experience okay yeah like she said i'm a lawyer and one of the things you know about me is that i'm a vocal advocate for women's rights and that includes of course what we're talking about today mm -hmm. and everything that pertains to women just generally mm -hmm. like i'm like the poster child for women's rights i really love that mm -hmm. and then um I love God and what else? I also work in the developmental field. Okay. That's okay. amazing. Like you know, these are the times when they ask you a question like, "Who are you?" And you're like, "What's my name?" What's my name? So, yes, and I think that's it. But a lot of people go on to type in racial Oh, really? That's not true. I think it's like, ah, nice. I promise. It's not nice. When someone says, "I'm nice." When someone says that, I don't know. Come on. Come on. I say that sometimes. For how we can get that, but I'm being honest. I don't understand. <laughs> hey. Thank you. Thank Shall I say your story? So basically, um, for me, I would say that I've been fortunate in the sense that I haven't been um, shamed as much. Like, yes, we all have experienced some type of shame, but like for me growing up, I had a dad who was quite, I like, say, sensitive about Amazing. this thing. Yeah, like, well, he was a single dad, he had no choice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it was more like he was sensitive. But I've had to do because I have awful cramps. Like, it's so bad. I'm showing up, I'm in pain, I'm begging God to take my life, oh, just remove God. my stomach for oh. that moment, you know. <laughs> and I've had to tell people sometimes, like, oh, I have pain, or people have watched me in pain and be like, um, you have this every month, like, are you not supposed to have this figured out by yeah. now? Like, mm. it's the same thing. I'm mm. like, okay, if I cut you every time, mm. like, every month I come and I cut you in the same place, are you not still going to feel that pain? Like, That's people are very, like, dismissive of, like, your feelings, your pain, and then it, it makes you a bit uncomfortable to even talk to, about yeah. it or even say it. I know we grew up with a lot of, like, even subconsciously, I grew up with just this, whole idea that you, you could not really talk about your period yes. like there were places that it was appropriate and places that it wasn't mm -hmm. and then it's just it's not something that anybody said outright it's almost like a sense like yeah. you you just kind of pick it up around you from probably people's experiences and like it's so funny that the first time i heard about like i knew about periods was associated i'm sorry associated with um like a pedophile type situation like wow. It's, it's a crazy story. Wow. Like I had a, um, 
my stepmom at the time was talking about how there was this older man who was trying to, I think, pounce on her or something. Mm -hmm. And then because he was constantly doing it, and you're, in your mind, you're like, he's constantly doing this, somebody should do something. But basically, she woke up one day, she had no idea what her own period, like, she had no idea what it's like to have like a menstrual cycle or anything mm -hmm. and then she wakes up one day and there's blood on her bed and it's like oh this man had touched her mm -hmm. and that was the story like to tell you that she had no idea and for me it's like okay i hear this story women are talking about their first time mm -hmm. and then okay what next yeah you want to ask questions but then again it's like it's unspoken you yeah. really can't say anything yeah. even when you hear the stories so i feel like as much as i may not have had direct in the sense of probably i was staying somewhere and yeah. then people were looking at me or a group of women were insulted mm -hmm. but i've had people you know subtly or even directly tell you like you should have this figured out like it's not that deep or even other girls tell you yeah. that um you're in pain and you're chewing up and you're like and you're like um is it for the same period like you know there's that tone I know. that people have like um are you sure you're not being dramatic about this whole thing yeah so that's my own experience about some of the um, period shame that I've experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, so before we even go into deep matters, mm -hmm. you know, the taboos and everything, let's talk about little things that women do to each other and men as well, even from our teenage years and they were period shame. Like, when I was growing up, I experienced it mm -hmm. and, you know, sometimes they have been told, you need to learn how to withhold this pain, that sort of thing, that is period shame. When someone feels crossed out, or when they have to tell you to use palatable names, you know, to identify menstruation. Yeah. You know, all of these little things are period shame. Like, what do you think? It's just okay, especially on this um, palatable names. It's more like you have to speak in code mm. because you don't want to go speak people that like, mm. let's be proper. Mm. Like, something, there's something wrong with you. Having a period, period. Like, speak, and, like something so natural, like I totally get um, where you're coming from. You know, that. initially I said it's just ridiculous. This is the most natural thing, yeah. and we still feel weird out about it. We are made to feel weird, like mm -hmm. this thing is happening to me. You know, it's it's it's, um, it's unheard of to talk about it, but it's happening to you, and it will keep happening for a very long time. Yeah, and I don't know where that comes from, honestly, because. You tell, you tell people that you're on your period and then they get uncomfortable around you. Especially men. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to yeah, that. I knew you were going to say that. Because there was this time when I was on my period and I wanted to change. And my friend was in my house with other women. So, like, he was the closest to the place where I put my pass. So, he didn't occur to me that he would be pushed out. I'm like, please help me pass my pass. And he was looking at me. That like, was even worse. <laughs> I should touch it. I'm like, wow. yes, help me pass like, it. And then somebody else was like, no, that's how. I said, no. Let him pass it and then he like, so I walked over and I grabbed the pad, unused, still in the pad, and then went, Yeah, he wanted to die. He wanted to die. Now what do? He got really upset and then he left. Why is it such a yeah, like I mean why is it such a big deal? There are women like that as well. You know how you just come here. Like, I know your period and sending blood blood. Okay. So like like <laughs> they instantly don't want to do anything to do with you. They don't. They do not. They do not. Or you are staying or something, and somebody's like, "Did you not prepare for this?" Thing? And sometimes I'm wondering, are you not a woman? There are times when your period just appears and then you don't plan for it, and you're asking me, "Did you not prepare for this thing?" What's your period day? So there are a thousand and one things. There are a thousand and one. Some people call you dirty because mm. you have a stain. Mm. Some people call you dirty. Some like people say, yeah. "Yes." It, there's so much con um, circling this um, period mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Let's let's even talk about schools that do not have clean um, 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 facilities and bathrooms for girls. I cannot begin to imagine how they feel, what they go through, yeah. because I don't know how do they do it. It's like, um, research has actually shown that one of the reasons that a lot of girls are out of school is because they do not have access to this um, sanitary and um, I say services mm. in school. There are people who they've recorded from research in the north that these girls, they go to school and when they are on their period, they can't go to school anymore. Mm. And so it's like, we stay at home, we miss out on school and by the time we're back, we, we've missed we out so much, up. we have to catch up. And then it's already hard going to schools in those areas for you to have to struggle with 
being a girl, just being a girl yes. in Nigeria and having to deal with that, like it's a whole issue. Like I don't know how people go through that. Mm. It's it's sad to see. It's sad to see that the basic. It, I feel like it's just as basic as water. Yeah. And it's just because we do not have control over these things, and then girls do not have access to from pads to or tampons to water during their period, like. All of that. Let's not even talk about the mouth because first of all, these girls are the risk of giving out in marriage, sometimes in exchange mm-hmm. yeah. for um, material relief. Mm-hmm. And they have been ta- I don't want to go into personal implications now. I was about to say girls have sex with men yeah. in order to be able to afford what they need to take care of themselves during their period. So imagine yes. a girl having to have sex every month because she needs to get stuff that she needs. It's, it's really it's crazy. crazy. I, I've even had stories of girls who would rather get pregnant so they do not have to bear the cost of nine months. You don't mean it. I'm telling you, like it's an issue that they have noticed that okay, some girls would rather be pregnant for nine months because they do not have to. What well, happens when the baby comes? Like, oh, it's a baby. But <laughs> well, in their mind, it's easier to deal with than even, especially in a very um, marginalized community. Mm. They don't have access to water. They don't have access. They have to go a long distance to get all these things. So it's like I'm pregnant for nine months. It means I do not have to stress so much on being clean every month or getting access to pad every month or even depending on let's say the goodwill of other people to take care of me. Mm. So for nine months, that cost has been removed. But then we're going into the cost and all mm. that. So, <laughs> yes. Wow. wow. It's crazy. Wow. Taboos. Yeah. Religious taboos. Cultural taboos. You know. <laughs> Do we even want to go there? Hmm. It's crazy because my grandmother used to tell me things like this and I'm like, you're joking. Then I did my research. There are, for a lot of religions, I think, uh, I don't want to be wrong, so let me not just let me not just say. But there are some religions that, back in the day, though, mm-hmm. though in the rural areas are not so exposed, they still do it. Where they have pots where they put women mm-hmm. when you're on your period, so you are kind of banished yeah. for the time. Yes, yeah, so you're just going to be there. You can't touch anybody. They can't. I mean, you're not touching me. I can't hand something to you, and your hand is on the other end of the thing. So they just drop it for them at their doors, and then leave. So they just be there throughout till they leave. Sometimes they don't even have anything there, nothing to. Maybe they just put a, an old rug that, for once, that's like the only thing they have, and they yeah. just, they're just there until they are unclean in that period. And then when they finish, they now come out and you know. And I don't know why something that produces people. The reason why this woman is going through this is yeah. so that she can be able to conceive, right? Mm-hmm. If you are not seeing your period is a problem. I'm seeing my period now. It's, it's a also a problem. problem. I'm unclean. I don't know. I honestly want to know where that, where the basis of that came from. Honestly, can we ever find the origin of these things? Yeah. How we put ourselves in this, in this situation? Did we put ourselves in this situation? Uh, there are lots of theories as to um, where period shame comes from. Of course, they the whole taboo that has to do with sex one just the whole concept of sex and how there's a certain shame attached to that Mm -hmm. and so because we live in a culture where people normally feel shame talking about sex or even the the experience of sex yeah anything that pertains to it is not something we want others to know about Mm -hmm. there's also the fact that okay in certain religious beliefs that they have they've been arguments that okay god himself said put them away so there's something dirty about them and although we can argue for and against because they the arguments that can say from the religious perspective that mm-hmm. at the time they did not have access to the technologies that we have today mm-hmm. and so it's that okay maybe they were more likely to certain illnesses and mm-hmm. all of that so it's that okay separate them so, so they, they do not have space they could get space and then it's for me it's crazy that certain things that were done in a time where there was no technology there was no knowledge as much as we have today and now put on women in today's world mm. Mm. do you get it like make any sense. it makes it no sense and there are lots of theories the cultural perspective all those things but once again we will never know where it comes from but i feel like um uh, uh, the, i don't want to say this because people will just be like uh, this is feminist and her issues but i think that there's just a certain discomfort with women being in their elements mm. that the world cannot really Deal with mm, I hear so, you. Mm. There's all of that. That's the preach. Okay. Um. At this point, we want to 
Media Chronicle. Okay. We we still get submissions now and again, and yeah. uh, we want to hear from you. So please send your submissions to fpcatalkutalku.com. <laughs> please, guys. All right, selling from Abuja says, when I started my period between age 13 or 14, it was a crazy experience. That was even before I was diagnosed of PCOS. Mm. So sorry, girl. I would flow for three to four weeks, very heavy, that I could change my pad every three or four hours. Mm. I would literally faint sometimes. I met with so many doctors then, but they couldn't diagnose what it was. Did I mention that my period would come out four times yearly? Yes. Nora. Getting stained. Yes, like Nora said. Getting stained was normal for me, even at home, coupled with the abdominal and uterine contraction. The body wrenching pains I would go through for that long. I do feel better now as I have been able to manage it through the help of a gynecologist. Now it flows for five days with less pain, but it's, it is still irregular because can be managed with the help of good specialists. Okay, so Selene, so we hear you. I love to love to you, honestly. Yeah. You understand what it's like. I cannot begin to imagine. That's, that's a lot. How can we detect? Because, because I feel like a lot of women need to know. Yes, I think it's becoming, I don't know, maybe it's because of the awareness that we have now, but it's becoming quite... Um, a lot of people are Yeah, a lot of people out. are starting to talk about it. And I have a friend, and why I can share the story is because I was there with her when it started. Okay. And it started in her, in her, I think she's turning 30 this year. Okay. So, it just started out of the blue. We thought it was an infection. She just started to spot blood everywhere and then she was like she didn't like the smell so we went to the hospital they said it was this one it was that one it was his i'm like i don't understand i mean microbiologists all of these things don't add up but you know how our health system in this country we need, we need work <laughs> one help us. so we were, we were trying different hospitals and everything it would stop it would come back it would stop it would come back she was losing weight she was breaking out like what's going on and she was becoming really hairy and she wasn't so we and i said see this thing i think you need to see a gynecologist actually not just any doctor she said that she saw one and that one just said to continue she should come back i said okay how about we do a hormonal test this thing i feel like this thing is hormonal i don't think it's an infection anymore okay and she said okay she'll think about it and then she did and then she just called me she said that they said it's because oh i see i'm like wow so she has to be on contraceptives to tone down her, her hormone so it's the i've forgotten what it's called the fertility hormone is an over secretion of the fertility hormone so that's why all of those things are happening so her body just wants her body just wants children children i guess but like that's what it's like and it's really really because it comes to the whole lot of things yeah the when the hormones secret it's not just the blood it's not just the breaking out your a lot. mood yeah. it's a lot so she had to change her diet your things that she not like she can't eat but she has to increase like other things she has to do like um female all these natural back supplements back. like yeah. yes that like, is going to be Forever. it's like a lifetime thing honestly if i don't know i've not seen cases where it goes away it's like, so it's like, like lifetime medication yes so she's on fenugreek she's on uh what's it called primrose oil all of those things those natural things that help us alongside contraceptives wow yes that's a lot that's a lot it is a lot because I remember the times when she would just be crying, like, what is the meaning of this? Oh Imagine God. you're having a very good day, and the spotting is irregular. You're having a good day, and you just go to the office and you come back and just eat, just like that. Wow. So it's, it's really crazy, honestly. It's really crazy. Well, guys, I just want to say that we cannot talk about this enough. No, yes. Okay, and, and I'm just glad that we're having this conversation. Yeah. I would love to you know, keep having this conversation going forward. But here you have it, guys. This is an episode. Period shape. And if you can guess what we're coming up next. <laughs> and our next guest. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty amazing. So see you in our next video. Yes, thank you, Sadia, for coming. Bye. See you guys. Thank you for having me. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.